Good evening, everyone. Um, good evening, those of you that are here uh, and everyone on the World Wide Web. Um, since 6 o'clock this evening, the Board of Education has been in closed session for purposes of discussion of closed meeting minutes, appointment and employment and compensation, discipline performance, and dismissal of specific employees, uh, setting a price for sale or lease of property owned by the district, and finally, litigation matters when the um, action against affecting, sorry, my thing's blurring out here, or on behalf of a particular district or has been filed and is pending before a court or administrative tribunal. And with that, I would like to make a motion to come out of closed session. So moved. Second. With a motion and second to come out of closed. All in favor? Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for coming, um, those of you that are here or those of you on the World Wide Web. And if I can just uh, state our mission, as we do every meeting, uh, to educate students to be self-directed learners, collaborative workers, complex thinkers, quality producers, and community contributors. And with that, I will ask our board secretary to take a roll call. Board members present, Susan Cotty, Susan Price, Terry Fielden, Jackie Romberg, Mike Gensch, and Kristen Fitzgerald. Thank you very much. And I will ask you to stand if you're able on the Pledge of Allegiance. And we are missing our students today, but we understand they're not here. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you. And I will turn it over to our superintendent for a bit of good news. I have some great news for all of our students who are at home anxiously awaiting the beginning of school. School begins 30 days from today. So I'll remind our families oh, to there. prepare for the beginning of school as we celebrate another beginning of a great school year. So just a reminder to our families out there, 30 days from today. Uh, we we begin the 14-15 school year. Wow. We don't have recognition today. We will do. We will have that hopefully in August as students return. Awesome. Thank you very much. And this section of our meeting, uh, all of our meetings, has public comment. And just to refresh everyone, anyone who would like to come and speak before the Board of Education, and if you're speaking on behalf of an individual, you would have three minutes. We will call your name um, and ask you to come up to the front table and uh, let us uh, repeat your name and your address. And if you're speaking on behalf of a group, you'd have five minutes. So I'll ask, there were these slips out in the hallway. I have three or four of them, or four of them. Um, if you didn't get a chance to fill one out and we're done with public comment, just raise your hand and we'll, of course, listen to whatever you have to say. So the first person I have, uh, Charlie Brown. And, yeah, the microphone's on, thank you. And if you're speaking again on behalf of yourself. We'd like you to respect the three-minute time, and our board secretary has a timer. And if you're speaking on behalf of a group, you have five minutes. And if you could state your name and address, please. My name is Charlie Brown, 1217 Evergreen Avenue, Naperville, Illinois, 60540. Great, I'm thank you. I'm speaking on behalf of myself. Great. I wanted to talk about the proposed cellular tower presentation because I have some firsthand knowledge of that. Um, I've done a uh, study with White, the, the uh, Shasta Mountain study, which started in 2006 and is still ongoing, where they point out that children are at greater risk due to the thinner skulls and rapid rate of growth. I know that's hard to believe when you help them with their homework, but that's true. Over 100 physicians and scientists at Harvard and Boston University schools of public health have called cellular towers a radiation hazard. And many who work for the FCC are past and present members of the wireless industry, and this is the regulatory agency of the wireless business. So it's kind of like the fox guarding the hen house. The EPA does not agree with the FCC standards, and analysts have recommended that EMR be classified as a probable human carcinogen. There have been several studies that have shown the cell, cell towers to have no ill effect on people at all, and then you find out that they were sponsored by the wireless industry. Even the WHO, Wealth, World Health uh, Organization, said that they, in uh, Denmark, said that no, everything's cool, and then you found out later that this, again, was sponsored by them. Some of the things that you have to look out for, you have to look out for the emissions. Uh, the emissions in the United States are okayed from 580 to 1,000 microwatts. Uh, Australia runs on 200 microwatts, Russia, Italy, Toronto, Canada, 10, China, 6, and Switzerland, 4. So in the grand old American custom, we like to fry people. So it's something that really concerned me because, uh, and I have no children in the school district, but having these on a school ground really concerns me a great deal. 
And I will top this off by saying my son was a vice president of a rural cellular company in Alexandria, Minnesota. Their tower was located by the corporate offices. Three out of 105 employees in that office contracted brain tumors, and fortunately two of them survived with radiation treatment. We lost our son at age 43 to an inoperable brain tumor. He left a wife and two children behind. So I know what I'm talking about with radiation. Um, when I gave you these figures of what, uh, what they're allowed to actually put out in microwatts, they really don't have a measurable uh, stick to say, well, this is all we're putting out right now. It, it just isn't there. So uh, I noticed that one of the, Mr. James, I believe you said that you didn't come to them, that they came to us, and I can think of the um, Greek horse going to visit the Trojans, too. And I heard about Greeks uh, bearing gifts. Be very careful, because this is a very volatile industry, and it's definitely owned by the uh, wireless people right now, and it's a big multi-billion dollar business. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Rod Elders, am I pronouncing that correctly? Thank you. Your name and address, please. My name's Rod Elders. I live at 6192 Hickory Drive, which is in the district. I'm speaking on behalf of myself this evening. First, I wanted to start off by thanking the board members and the staff for doing a great job of your mission. Your mission, as everyone here knows, is to educate children. It's not to further the interest of private industry. It's not to help a cellular, cellular company fill in a, a dead zone, as it were, in their cellular, cellular coverage. Um, I'm glad to see there's no motion to approve the lease today. I'm hoping you're not talking about the terms of the lease in closed session, because if you are, you've put the cart before the horse. Uh, thank you for responding to my FOIA request based upon my review of the documents that I received from the district so far. The district or its staff has done no research whatsoever into the possible health effects of these cellular towers. Perhaps you could retain Mr. Brown. Perhaps you could talk to Ms. Harris. Ms. Harris, as I understand it, is your director of health services. If you spoke with Ms. Harris, she would tell you what your objective should be here. Your objective is, has, and always will be to minimize the potential risk to your students. This is a risk which is completely avoidable. This is a risk that has come to you. And why? For money. Um, I've looked at the budget. I've looked at the lease. The amount of money that they're offering you is negligible, especially in the amount of the budget. Uh, I don't know if you need it, if you need the money. Uh, let me know. I will help you find it in your existing budget, or I will lead personally the referendum to raise my taxes, uh, because I'd rather raise taxes than expose children to radiation. Um, if the district, when the district does its health study, I'm hoping you guys will come to your own conclusions about the science, but so far the only science you have is from the industry, and they gave you a handout from the American <clears throat> Cancer Society. I encourage you to read it, because on page three, it talks about a study that found that, it, that these sorts of tire, towers increase the risk slight, slightly of children developing tumors and cancers. So you already have science that says this is a bad idea. Um, for all those reasons, I think, it's, I think it's admirable. And once again, I credit the staff for looking for alternative funding sources. That's part of their job. Um, if you need help finding sponsors, to sponsor the school, to do a bake sale. I'll do a bake sale personally. You might not like my cookies, but I, I, I will, I, I pledge to you as a father of a son who will be one of your students very soon, that you have a very supportive community. And we will do whatever we can to keep our kids safe and have this district be well funded. I also um, attended the Park, Lyle Park District meetings when they did the same presentation. And I'm hoping this board comes to the same conclusion that the Lyle Park District came to, which is this is not your mission. The money is not worth it. It's not going to happen. That's the one message I do want to leave you with tonight. If you don't kill it, we will. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sudma Suravas? Thanks. My name is Sudha Srinivas. I'm a resident of 2949 Valley Forge Road. Um, that, for those who don't know the area, is right across from Kennedy. I have a 
eighth grader well going into ninth uh, who went to Kennedy Junior High for three years and is off to Naperville North this year. So even though my son will not be going to Kennedy, I'm strongly opposed to having a cell phone tower, a 75 foot tall cell phone tower on school property in a very residential neighborhood. <coughs> There's a few points I want to raise. First, um, one of the main reasons I'm opposed to this uh, cell phone towers, it's, it is not aligned to the core values, vision, or beliefs of the school district. It doesn't represent a positive choice for the physical, social, spiritual, or emotional health of its students. And you recognize those words, they are in your mission statement, your vision and beliefs. Um, the proposal, um, the proposed cell tower brings in additional revenue of about, um, what that represents about 0.00083% of your annual budget to expose a growing child's health for this kind of a revenue, I don't think is a responsible choice. I have many points, and I'm going to send you a letter with all these four pages of points, but I want to touch only on the ones that haven't been mentioned by others that have spoken um, recently. Um, the handout provided by the school uh, mentions benchmark districts. There are seven benchmark districts in the area. Of those, only two districts allow cell towers on school property, and none of them allow it on middle schools, middle school property, or elementary school property. Um, another point mentioned in your handout is about the placement, how AT&T has worked with developers to place cell, cell phone antennas on hospitals, uh, the Comer Children's Hospital in Chicago, Hyde Park, um, the um, Anne and Robert Laurier Hospital in Chicago. These are all in mixed commercial and residential areas. The Anne Laurier Hospital is surrounded by the Museum of Contemporary Art on one side, Northwestern University buildings on the other. None of these are in residential neighborhoods. Think about the neighborhood children that go to the schools. They're exposed to radiation on school property. They come back home and they're exposed to some more radiation 24 seven for their growing lives. I believe this is a really uh, bad choice and I hope the school district will not make it. I was one of the people that spoke out at the Lyle Park District hearing against placement of the antennas right across from Kennedy in Valley Forge Park. Um, I was opposed to that, and I remain opposed to having cell phones in residential neighborhoods, mm -hmm. cell phone towers. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you very much. Betsy, Betsy Yes, Betsy Delane. Is there anyone else after the speaker comes up? Absolutely, no problem. Thanks. If you could mention your name and Yes. Address, please. Thank yes. you. Yes, Betsy DeLang, 869 Turnbridge Circle, which is uh, the Knowles of Huntington. We are your immediate uh, neighbors to the west, and I am here uh, as a board designate, Knowles of Huntington Homeowners Association board designate. And many of the points that I wish to articulate have been raised by the predecessors here. Um, and uh, we do oppose this. It, and for us, too, it is not about aesthetics and it's not about property values. It's about safety for our children. And that safety is both potentially the risk of radiation emission and secondarily the, the risk of vandalism that may occur to that plant, to that uh, cell tower. And, and so the offshoot of a safety risk leads me down the path of uncertainty. And if you consider a risk-reward analysis as you're considering this option, the path of uncertainty is so great before us. Certainly there are uh, studies, as Mr. Brown alluded to, that say there's no uh, radiation emission potential. But we all know that there can be other studies which will refute that 100%. So that uncertainty leads us down the path that we don't want any children to be at risk, not even one. Not even if there's 
you know, a one-tenth of one percent chance of radiation admission do we want to put our children at risk. And so we also contend that the risk-reward analysis takes us down the path that this just isn't a good idea for us to, to pursue. And um, I, too, looked at the your mission statement today, I printed it out, and it occurred to me a couple of things that, first of all, technically you guys aren't charged with raising revenue, and I share the gentleman's uh, comments previously. I will personally help you raise funds uh, if you need money. You can come knock on my door, call me, email me. I, I will do whatever it takes if, if really funding is the issue here. Um, and the other thing I would encourage you to do with your mission statement is take a look because nowhere does it reference a safe environment. And you probably haven't looked at that mission statement in, in a while. Mm -hmm. And I think that honestly, with what is happening in our world, a safe environment is very critical in our mission statement. So again, on behalf of the Knowles of Huntington, we would ask you to please say no to that cell tower. Thank you. Thank you very much. And the one last speaker, please. No worries, no worries. Thank you so much. It's your name and uh, um, name and address, please. My name is Ken Bannis. I live at 6482 Cape Cod Court uh, in Lyle. Uh, thank you very much for allowing me to speak today, as I did at the last meeting. Uh, I echo everyone's comments before me in, in terms of my opposition to the cell tower. Uh, one dimension that I ask you to consider, uh, and I'd like to thank you for the measured approach you're taking to your data gathering. I think delaying the conversation, not having it on the agenda today. Uh, and waiting until we get deeper into the school year when we can actually engage the parents in the community uh, outside of the summer uh, churn and the, the school startup churn is uh, really putting your, your money where your mouth is in terms of wanting to get that uh, community input. So I, I commend you for that. Uh, I, I think that uh, if you get into a conversation about uh, this scientist says this and that scientist says that, uh, you're going to find data uh, on either side. Uh, I, I think that when you think about uh, a risk-reward analysis you put together, relative probability and impact, and you can figure that out statistically and, and come to your own conclusion about what you think relative probability is, you're comfortable with the, the science and, and others have a, a lack of comfort. But uh, I think one thing that needs to be thought of here is what is the possibility of negative events associated with this that are outside of what the science would say? So I ask you to consider outcomes like a single study two years from now coming out and saying that there's a possibility that such uh, impacts occur that's not known today. In a different part of the spectrum, magnetic waves instead of uh, uh, the RF frequency, uh, would you stop the cell tower from emitting? Do you have that ability within the lease? Let's say, God forbid, that one of the several hundred students at Kennedy or Lincoln Junior High contracts some sort of cancer and the liability that you're opening the district up, when they come back to these very conversations and say that this board was aware of that possibility, was presented with a series of facts that this was a possibility, elected to go forward with this anyway, and we happen to have that one in a million effect. What does that do in terms of opening up the district to liability? Is, it, can you even begin at $2,500 a month to protect yourselves from the legal bills associated with that. I'll tell you, uh, working for an industry where uh, plaintiff's lawyers have uh, come after in class action suits, there, if there is money, there will be lawyers. They will come after the individuals and associations with deep pockets. That will certainly be the school board district uh, and, uh, and the district. And I, I don't think that that is a small likelihood that should there be a data point that's unforeseen, should some child unfortunately develop something like that, that the small $2,500 a month uh, stipend that you be received would offset that. And, and this, again, is not an issue of do you believe in the science one way or the other. It's what kind of behavior and what kind of outcomes can have in that risk reward. I, I ask you to consider all those things, the fact that the Lyle Park District Board has already said uh, no to this, the fact that you continue to have community members show up even at these early stages, uh, the fact that I and some of my uh, fellow residents behind me uh, are speaking on behalf of a series of other uh, uh, members, and this is not just a hypothetical. Uh, people don't like the idea of cell towers at middle schools. And if you just take a step back and think about that, we're actually contemplating putting a cell tower for AT and T within a hundred feet of a middle school. Uh, that seems absurd when I hear it. Uh, as a taxpayer and as a resident, I appreciate the fact that we look for alternative revenue sources. I want you to do that, 
but this one certainly doesn't seem to pass the initial smell test. And as you think about the cost for health studies, as you think about the cost of negotiating the contract, as you think about the cost of having conversation with outside counsel, as you think about what it does to the perception of the board and the district, as you engage in community forums about this topic, uh, when you already have these data points uh, here today and in previous conversations, uh, it just doesn't seem like the right allocation of resources as we take it beyond this. So I'm glad we're not talking about this uh, in earnest today. Uh, I'd ask you to consider whether or not that further conversation uh, at a time in September and October is even worth it uh, based on uh, the risk and, and look forward to the ability to uh, engage in a conversation as you begin to educate yourself more fully about this. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Okay, any other comments? Okay. Okay, doke. We will go. Written, I'm sorry. Oh, the blind. Yeah. Uh, written communications. Uh, point six point oh one in our agenda. If you uh, would like to peruse that in uh, board docs, and uh, next we'll have the uh, superintendent staff school report, please. Sure. As uh, several community members have noted this evening at our June 16th Board of Education meeting, administration presented the Board of Education with an overview of a proposal submitted uh, by a third party for the installation of two cellular towers on District 203 property. Uh, Chief School Business Official Brad Kaufman gave an overview of the request uh, and one idea of how revenue generated by the proposed lease uh, could be used by the district. Uh, tonight, uh, in board docs, we have provided the Board of Education and Community with additional information regarding the proposal for your review and reference. Uh, the information is provided in board docs and is available online via the school board's page on our website. Uh, we, at this point, as has been referenced by our, our last speaker, are in a fact-finding and information-gathering mode at this time uh, to ensure that we can be responsive to all the questions uh, and requests for information that you as board members have asked for. So we'll continue to gather that information and make it available to you. Uh, since our last meeting, Mr. Kaufman and I have met with two community members who spoke at the last meeting uh, who have particular expertise in some areas related to this field, and we appreciated the insight that they had to share with us, and, and we'll follow up on some of the things that, that we talked about. Uh, I expect our next formal report uh, or for discussion without action to occur during our first meeting in September. Uh, should the board continue to determine to continue to move forward with exploring this topic, uh, opportunities for any public input, uh, would be scheduled prior to any recommendation for action that may come to the board. So again, I'll stress that uh, as the board wishes, if we continue to move forward prior to any request for action, there will be ample opportunity for uh, public input. Uh, again, I just want to stress we are in the information gathering mode still at this time. We do not have a formal recommendation to the Board of Education. Uh, I would ask that as board members, if you continue to have questions, please send those to me and I'll direct them to staff as appropriate. And community members, as staff uh, comes up, uh, as questions come up, or you have information you'd like to share, you're encouraged to send those to me. Uh, take any questions you may have at this time. Questions or comments? Um, thank you, Dan. Um, I think that uh, we did talk at, at our June 16th meeting, um, and I'll re-emphasize it tonight. Um, we'll have these conversations in September when our community is back and engaged. Um, and we're, I wanted, uh, I did receive a community member reached out to me and we had a conversation and um, I promised this community member that I would ask our board secretary to take this information and we're going to scan it and put it in board docs just so everybody in the public can also know about it. And that member of the community will come in September and speak. Or, one of the September meetings. So um, again, we're, uh, we owe it to the community to uh, all, listen to all sides. Um, and that's why this is going to be a very slow, deliberate process, um, as our superintendent said. So we will look for any, anyone that has any other questions or comments, please direct them to uh, whether it's the superintendent staff or to the Board of Education if you need us to understand um, uh, one of the sides of this uh, proposal. Um, and from then, it'll just, I'm sorry, uh, September will be the next time we'll talk about this. I don't know if there's anything, I guess at this point we don't know if there'll be anything new that we need to report um, in August. If there is, uh, we'll certainly share it with you, but we will have our true um, conversations about it um, in our two September meetings. So we will move on to, I do not have a report this evening. I think one of our, um, we'll get to board education reports in a second. Um, our Vice President will talk about uh, the next two items, uh, Board Committee Liaisons and Adopt-a-School. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay, so every year, um, before we start this, 
once a year before we start the following school year, we reassign um, committees to the board members and we also reassign adopt the schools. And under item 6.04, you can see that the uh, board committee liaisons have been assigned. And it's a little bit different uh, for 14-15 uh, to make sure that we can have a board attendance at some of the uh, functions and so forth. We've got an alternate board member listed. We have a primary board member and we have an alternate board member listed. And so that alternate board member, uh, what would happen is, if we look at the Naperville Education Foundation as an example, we have Donna Wanke, who's going to be the committee rep, or the board representative. If she can't make a meeting, we'd ask her to call Susan Price uh, to be the alternate there to attend the meeting. And if Susan can't attend, then they should call the board vice president, and we'd work around and find somebody else to attend the meeting. But that's just to get so we have board representation there and can report back. So that's one change. And then the adopt a school is also, the assignments are there as well. Uh, there's really no format change on that. It's um, just a typical assignment to try to rotate them around as best we can. Of course, there's no board member who has a child present inside a facility. They will not have that as an adopt a school. That's just a practice that the board has so that there's no real clear cut conf conflict of interest and the principal doesn't feel any pressure to uh, yield to that board member. So, okay. Great. Thank you so much, Terry. And uh, one other, if um, any staff, if there are meetings, if you can include the alternates in the meeting, just in case it's going to be two days before the meeting and they can't make it, they can also have it on their calendar. If it, I was sure. going to ask if in the future we could turn it back and do it maybe in June, because so many of these groups put together their books and things like that, um, and you know they're guessing who it might be and things like that, and I just. You know, our staff is so responsive to us if that's helpful to them. Um, we should do it earlier. To do it like at the, in June, okay. once kind of the school year is wrapped up so that we could get, get that to them earlier. Yeah, and I think the focus, it's a great point. Our focus has always been before the school year starts and before everyone starts visiting for the adopted schools, but right. that's a point well taken. So, And so. then just on the chamber liaison, can you just change Susan Price's name to her act with her spelling so that it's not me she and I Terry <laughs> oh that's okay just so, yeah you hybrid, hybrid it up. Yeah. it's not a problem I just wanted I asked her I said that's you right not me or you know whatever so that was it I appreciate these and yeah. it's really a great opportunity to to interact in our, with our community other districts right. I know when we talk about it they're so jealous they think it's just such a great thing so right. Yes, I think it's also great that we added the alternates this year. That's a super good addition. I have been in a situation before where I missed a meeting and you know there wasn't a board rep representative there and I think that's a great idea to put yeah. those alternates in there just so we always have that board presence. Great, great. Okay, doke. Um, sounds good, thank you, Terry. Thank you for all that. It, uh, it's, it's a big puzzle, especially when uh, our board members have students in schools to uh, to mix around and give everyone different opportunities at different, give board members different opportunities at different schools, but they can't always take those schools where they have students uh, attending. So thank you so much for all that. And um, I think Kristen has a Board of Education report this evening. I do, it's just a follow-up. I do have a board re report. Uh, it's just a follow-up on the um, resolution that our district helped to draft last year for the Illinois Association of School Boards and the legislation that came from that resolution. Um, I think I had reported a couple of months ago that we were continuing to work on the drafting of the legislation, addressing concerns about how to truly provide information from local school districts in a timely way. And so I just wanted to share that I've continued to meet with ISB staff and others um, to look at ways that we can um, address <coughs> that process, figure out how we can get that cost information to school districts um, and to legislators. Um, so uh, I think we'll continue to move forward, you know, making changes to legislation and looking at that and we're looking at developing ways to get actual cost information. I think um, in the back of our minds it's um, something that we think would be helpful for legislators to have, especially as there continue to be dialogue about um, school funding. Um, SB 16, for example, as they continue to look at those types of bills um, to look at additional costs um, and to give schools the tools to be able to say, okay, there's those costs, here's the impact, but here's another impact of this type of mandate, et cetera. So just wanted to report about that and um, we'll continue to work on it and keep Great. the board informed. Thank you very much, Kristen. I appreciate that. Um, next on our agenda, our monthly reports, our treasury report, uh, investments, insurance report, and budget report. And with that, we... Uh, 
uh, a board member each month um, does bills and claims and meets with our uh, meets with the district's finance uh, department. And this month it would have been Mr. Fielden. So I will turn it over to you. Okay, <clears throat> I move approval of warrant number three nine zero two three six through warrant number three nine zero eight nine six, totaling thirty one million six hundred ninety eight thousand two hundred sixty one dollars and forty cents for the period of June seventeenth, twenty fourteen, to July twenty first, twenty fourteen, and items eight point oh two through eight point oh six on the consent agenda. Nine point. Oh, sorry. No, it's eight. 8.02 to 8.06, now it's a policy. Right. No worries. As presented. No problem. Um, thank you very much. We have a, uh, a motion. Uh, I'm sorry, we have a, a motion and a second, second. Uh, for uh, uh, the consent agenda, items 8.01 through 8.06. Uh, Ms. Bell. Price? Yes. Romberg? Yes. Fitzgerald? Aye. Ms. Fielden? Yes. Prady? Yes. 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 Aye. Thank you very much. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next item, uh, 9.01. I was just so excited to get us to that policy. I apologize for that. <laughs> sure, no sure, wasn't, sure wasn't the green shirt. That, uh, yeah, the green shirt that. blinded yeah. you. Right, that happens. Uh, just a reminder for our community members who are following, uh, we are in the process of reviewing our policy manual and bringing our policy up to date and in line with um, uh, IASB recommendations for best practice. Uh, our deputy superintendent, Kane Osborne, has been uh, shepherding this for us, and we have uh, pretty much been going section by section. We've already addressed sections one and section two, and tonight we bring forward the policies in section three. So uh, we have them listed individually. I know in 9.01 there should be a list of uh, each of the policies in the section with some quick notes uh, regarding recommendations for change and their justification. But at this time I'm going to turn it over to Kane and let him walk us through uh, each of the proposed changes. Thank you, Mr. Bridges. Um, as you mentioned, in 9.01, there is a cover memo that outlines on the table the policies up for revision, um, their topics, highlights about those changes, and just the recommendations um, regarding those. So for item 9.01, it pertains to policy 3.10 on general school administration uh, goals and objectives. Um, and as you can see from the red line version, which is the proposed policy, um, it includes districts, beliefs, vision, and mission, and specific objectives aligned to other policies. Uh, ISB recommends for this section, we agree. Um, it's updated related to certain things like the Illinois Learning Standards, um, but it also aligns to other policies that um, have been adopted that are cross-referenced in the section below. Uh, and so we do recommend that uh, this policy is um, approved as proposed. And again, just for clarification, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry to interrupt you, Kane. These are just discussion without action. We are not um, voting on these this evening. This is just our, our first um, discussion of these mm -hmm. topics. Correct. In fact, um, one of the hopes is that any questions or feedback that you have tonight, we would then incorporate into what we bring forward for action in August. Um, 3.20 is regarding the organizational chart. Um, and as you can see, we recommend that that actual section be eliminated and that it be the organizational chart, which is uh, be included as an exhibit in 3.20. Seven zero. I'm sorry, 3.30, which is the next section on lines and staff relations. Three. Uh, so if you look to sec, uh, item 9.02, we're still there. Uh, 3.30 on lines and staff relations. Uh, the title of that's changed to change of, uh, chain of command. Um, some cross-reference changes. Um, and some other details relating to the language on an organizational chart. That's why we went ahead and included the chart in this new section and eliminated section 3.20. We have included as an exhibit the organizational chart as drawn up. Moving on to... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
just a very quick comment that I think it's much richer to include the, all the cross references. So thank you for doing that. Thank you. No problem. Um, item 9.03 pertains to policy section 3.40 on superintendent duties and authority, qualifications, evaluation, compensation, and benefits. Um, there have simply been some uh, very brief passages added uh, related to the duties of a superintendent. Um, they're cross referenced already with items that the board has passed previously. Uh, additionally, there's just language change related to the language that the state's taken on related to licensure, because now we're not certified anymore, we're licensed and things like that. Any questions about 3.40? Okay. okay. Sorry. Item. Oh, sorry. No, my, it was a com just a comment that my only comment, and I had sent it to Kane earlier, but I think it would be helpful perhaps to c to cross-reference the goal. Oh, you do, go you, you do have goals and objectives oh, cross-referenced cross here. in there. Okay. okay. I misspoke when I replied. So, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, item 9.04 pertains to policy section 3.50 on administrative personnel other than the superintendent. Um, one thing that's added in the proposed policy, um, it states that in the event of a conflict, state law and or the administrator's employment agreement shall control. The conflict there, the intention is if there's a conflict between what the general duties and authority of that person are, if there's some conflict over what that means, that you look to state law or the employment agreement with that person to clarify. Those are the controlling documents uh, in that case. That's the recommendation. And that would make sense since both of those, either statute or that agreement, have the force of law. Um, the other ones are related to language that's been adopted by the state in a number of cases. Again, related to state law, state board of education, certification requirements. Um, and the last one under compensation benefits is language recommended by ASB which we've actually adopted and made more flexible um, as to when recommendations regarding compensation and benefits should be brought forward. Um, under evaluation, on the superintendent it says, you know, shall every, at least every year, mm -hmm. and for, um, for administration it doesn't s state that, and I'm curious if... Oh. Uh, it says administrators shall annually present evidence to the superintendent of professional growth through attendance. Um, it does not say that every, it does not require that it be every year in okay. policy. And do we do it every year? Yes, we do. Okay, so I'm just curious if our policy should reflect what our practice is. That's, I, I'm just, you know, <laughs> What concerns me is when you have somebody that says, oh, this person's doing great, I don't need to review them, but there's a huge difference over several years. So I would like to have maybe at least annually considered okay. to be added in there. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Okay. We'll amend that language for when it comes before the board next month. Thanks, Kate. Okay. Are you on the administrative side or on the Yeah, it says that's about professional the growth, but not the actual the evaluation. Evidence of professional, right? I do. I would just hate for somebody, like, to work for somebody who never feels they need to review them. So. Certainly. Absolutely. That was policy 3.50, item 9.04. Going on to item 9.05, policy 3.60. Uh, administrative responsibility of the building principal. Um, that has been mostly amended for language issues and it's including assistant principals uh, in there. Um, one of the questions was about um, improvement of instruction. State law indicates that the primary duty of a principal is to improve instruction. Um, and in fact, when we get our audits, that's one of the things that the auditors seek to confirm. So that's something that should remain in there as is. Um, the additional language below is related to state requirements about um, 
principals and assistant principals being pre-qualified evaluators. They have to go through and get pre-qualification before they can evaluate anybody. And finally, that the superintendent must evaluate them or the superintendent's designee according to school code. We wouldn't, it's important that we go ahead and keep it as school code because if the code changes, we can keep the policy as is. Any, mm -hmm. Remind me, um, several years ago, we had IASB, we contracted with them to, ha to keep these up to date. And do we still contract with them? Yes, we do. That's yeah, part of the, that's this right. is part of that very process. Yeah. But some of them are like, you know, when it says to, like, it's been a long time since they've been, been touched. There had been a period of time when it had been lax and they had not been brought forward for review. This is why this is so important for us and we're taking the time that we're doing to get these up to date so that our entire board policy book and manual is up to date. And as one of the con you know, conversations we've been having as some of our policies, you'll note, have been customized. Those become more and more difficult to keep current because mm -hmm. of they're not in compliance right. in line with the IASB recommended or model policy. So this will this will allow us in the role of the deputy superintendent will play the take the responsibility of ensuring that we're cons compliant and consistent with press. So next year, if you change the um, diagram of what our correct because I know we've been through lots of those. I did I, I personally did not realize they were in our policy like the the drawing of it. They um, sit as an administrative regulation attached to the policy, correct? Okay. So, thank you. And part of that also is aligning, frankly, the numbering system. So when they send us a numbered update, it matches to something we have. Otherwise, it's very hard to keep the updates. Um, okay, moving on to 3.70. Sorry, just a question. So, um, this one, we also do not specify that it's annually. And I know it is specified in the law. So mm -hmm. do we want to add that because it would be more consistent with our other ones? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I agree with the idea that we want to keep the state law reference as opposed to putting in the actual things that are in the state law because that makes it easier for us. But I didn't know, do we want to put that time in there because we say it in the other, in the other policy? Yeah, we can review that. I see a spot where that could go. So we'll review I that. I mean, it would just make it more mm -hmm. consistent with the other policies. Okay. Uh, item 9.06 is on policy 370, succession of authority. Um, the change there is simply that the superintendent will bring before the board uh, a plan for succession for approval by the board. Um, upon approval of this policy, then the superintendent would do just that. In the meantime, certainly the reference to the organizational chart is um, part of that which would be brought forward. Any other questions? Dean, thank you so much. Love the cheat sheet. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, that was in uh, 9.01. Mm -hmm. um, and you and anybody that's reviewing these um, in the public and in the community, it makes it very, very clear and a lot easier to follow. So thank you. And uh, any other, we'll discuss these, uh, we'll vote on these. Um, and if you have any other questions? Uh, colleagues, right please uh, direct them to Dan and his staff, and we'll vote on them at our meeting in, uh, in August. Thank you. I was going to say, I came, we did get some comments from Donna. Donna was uh, out mm -hmm. of town for some volunteer activity uh, today. And Dan she copied had, me on those. I, yeah, yeah, I get you Dan has those. So he'll send them to Oh, you. okay, very good. She just wanted me to mention that she had the comments, and okay. we'll be getting them. I'll make sure I get those. Thank you. Uh, our next uh, agenda by item number 10, 10.01 and 10.02, our discussion with action this evening. We had two reports that were brought to the Board of Education last week by our Learning Services Department, and an important member of that team has been and will continue to be the Director of Curriculum. But I would like to acknowledge that in the consent agenda this evening, the Board of Education uh, approved uh, the appointment of Jane Willard as the Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction. So we are pleased to bring uh, Jane's expertise in the area of curriculum forward as a part of our cabinet team and look forward to great leadership under Jane. So look forward to years of working with her. That being said, she and her team presented to the Board of Education a recommendation for high school science pathways, which is a result of the 612 science curriculum team and the release of the new generation science standards. If there are any questions, uh, Dr. Hester, Jane, or I would be happy to answer those. Take the first one. Uh, I'm sorry. 
we're not going to do another presentation. I'm just nope. Here. So no, we're just um, going to approve it. Should right. we? Okay. Yeah, so I move approval of the what am I looking? For? Science yeah, pathways uh, as presented. Second. We have a um, a motion and a second for item 10.01, science pathways. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions? Ms. Bell. Yes. Fielden. Yes. Price. Yes. Yes. Aye. Romberg. Yes. Fitzgerald. Aye. Crowley. Thank you very much. Motion carries. Uh, next agenda item 10.02, literacy resources. Learning services team at our last Board of Education meeting shared with the Board of Education some recommendations for additional text materials. Uh, Jane is here again, and Jen or I would be happy to answer any questions you may have. We have no additional information. I make a motion to approve item 10.02, literacy resources. Second. Motion in a second for 10.02 literacy resources. Uh, any other comments or questions? Price? Yes. Fitzgerald? Aye. Romberg? Yes. Yes. Aye. Price? Yes. Fielden? Yes. Great. Thank you. Motion carries. Um, I know you're all, we'll, we'll try to add some more things on this agenda before we get to the end because I know it would be speaker shock if we get out of here too quickly. Uh, schedule of events. The, um, Agenda, agenda is um, populating, which is wonderful, and thank you for everyone for getting um, uh, the dates to us. It's really, really helpful and fair. Um, so with that, our next agenda item, uh, if there's anything anybody needs to plug or talk about in current agenda items, I think we have 30 days. Till I'll just days. remind everyone, August 20th, 2014, <laughs> school begins. Second. Motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming, and uh, we will see you. Enjoy your summer, and we will see you in August.